Good day. Here are the stories for the Manila Times for Saturday, July 16, 2022. Philippines COVID cases keep climbing. Cases of coronavirus disease or COVID-19 in the country continued to climb, breaching the 1,700 daily average mark over the past week. In its COVID situation issued on Friday, the Department of Health or DOH said the national daily average jumped by 40% during the week of July 8 to 14 to 1,751 cases. The National Capital Region or Metro Manila still has the steepest increase with 748 daily cases, while Mindanao's numbers are also inching up. Despite the rise, the risk classification remains to be low, along with average daily attack rates and healthcare utilization rates. Severe and critical admissions are also low, 651 out of the total 7,629 cases in hospitals across the country. The case load is still a far cry from the record 39,004 cases on January 15, a surge driven by the highly infectious Omicron variant. Majority of the Omicron cases, however, are mild compared to the Delta variant. The DOH also reported that 71.2 million individuals have been fully vaccinated for COVID-19 as of July 13, while 15.5 million have received booster doses. The National Task Force to End Local Communist Armed Conflict or NTF LCAC is recommending offering amnesty to communist guerrillas. National Security Council Advisor and NTF LCAC Vice Chairman Clarita Carlos made the recommendation during a press conference at the Armed Forces of the Philippines or AFP Commissioned Officers Club on Friday. The members of the Executive Committee of the Government's Anti-Insurgency Machinery also vowed to continue the NTFL CAC under the administration of President Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. Carlos said the amnesty will be offered to rebels in geographically challenged, isolated, and disadvantaged areas. She said the Executive Committee has also recommended reaffirming the importance of the whole-of-nation approach in addressing the root cause of the insurgency. Philippine Economic Zone Authority or PESA Director General Charito Plaza said she is ready to sit down with San Miguel Corporation or SMC President and Chief Executive Officer Ramon Ang to put everything in order and move forward with regard to the Bulacan Airport City Special Economic Zone and Freeport Zone Authority or BACSEFZA, a proposal that President Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. recently vetoed. House Bill 7575, which proposed the creation of a special economic zone and free port in the 750 billion peso airport city being developed by SMC in Bulacan, Bulacan, was thumbed down by Marcos on July 1, who cited the fiscal risks and provisions incompatible with existing regulations. It is also too close to the Clark Special Economic Zone in Pampanga. In a roundtable interview with the Manila Times on Friday, Plaza pointed out that from the get-go, the measure was legally and constitutionally defective. She said there are only two ways to create a special economic zone, by legislation or directly registering with PESA. Public eco-zones must go through legislation while those privately owned should be registered with PESA. There may be two to three tropical storms that will possibly enter the country within the month of July, according to weather specialist Benison S. Tahera of the Philippine Atmospheric, Geophysical, and Astronomical Services Administration or PAGASA. A storm is a violent disturbance of the atmosphere with strong winds and usually rain or snow or thunder, among others. The state-run weather agency will be closely monitoring the storms, as Tareja said on Friday. He also said the low-pressure area or LPA that stayed in the Philippine area of responsibility for a couple of days has dissipated, and a generally fair weather condition is expected until over the weekend. The southwest monsoon or habagat will be experienced particularly in the western section of northern Luzon and central Luzon until the weekend, as Tareja added. 
Topping business, the amount of money sent home by overseas Filipino workers or OFWs increased to its highest level in two months in May, according to data released on Friday by the Banco Central ng Pilipinas or BSP. Personal remittances or cash or kind transfers between families reached $2.70 billion in the fifth month of 2022, up 1.27% from $2.67 billion in April and 1.99% from $2.65 billion in May 2021. Since the $2.88 billion sent in March of this year, this was the most OFWs ever sent. The expansion over a year ago in May was related to remittances from land-based employees with contracts lasting one year or more, as well as from sea land and land-based employees with short-term contracts. Over to sports, Filipino Q artist Rubelen Amit advanced to the quarterfinal round in women's nine ball singles at the 2022 World Games in Birmingham, Alabama on Friday, Manila time. Amit, a 10-time Southeast Asian Games gold medalist, defeated German Pia Filler 9-8 in the round of 16 to enter the knockout stages. The 40-year-old pool player clawed back from a 6-8 hole to frustrate the 24-year-old Filler, who is national champion in Germany. Amit, a two-time winner of the World Pool Billiard Association or WPA Women's World Tenbol Championship, is set to face Veronika Ivanovskaya of Germany in the quarterfinals. Antonio Contreras, Yen Macabenta, and Danton Remoto are today's front-page columnists. Contreras talks about political science and power. Macabenta urged President Marcos to resolve the contradictions in his policy choices. And Remoto discusses the book Arsenic and Adobo. Today's editorial believes the work in the 19th Congress has become sloppy. Read the full version on the paper's opinion section or listen to the Voice of the Times. For more news and information, get a copy of the Manila Times on print. Subscribe to its digital edition or log on to www.manilatimes.net. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram. And keep up with the Times. This is EJ Gomez reporting. Our longest trusted English newspaper since 1898. Now available digitally. Computer. Order the Manila Times Digital Edition. Subscribed. Get the Manila Times Digital Edition for less than 2 pesos and 50 centavos per day when you sign up for one year. The Manila Times, new source of choice, trusted since 1898.